Bourne Harbour cycle exam questions may look easy at first, but according to several examiner reports, they're not quite as well answered as you might think, due to the very careful attention to detail they require, and because lots of people forget to revise the lattice enthalpy trends vocabulary thoroughly enough. Let's use this exam question from Paper 1 2019 on the OCRA specification for A-level chemistry to examine the details of everything we need to know. This cycle we have in the question is for potassium oxide, which is brilliant because it's an example of a formula which has a multiple of an ion, and we need to consider that in the calculation later. For four marks here, we need to fill in four of the boxes on the lines, and remember that nothing leaves a box. All the way around, we need to show absolutely everything. Not even an electron is allowed to sneak out. Everything also needs to balance too. So you can see here that for the first box I'm filling in, the potassium and oxygen elements must be the correct formula for 298 Kelvin and 100 kilopascals of pressure, and then balanced to match the formula of the lattice. Going up to my next box to complete, but via a completed line, I can tell that the enthalpy change here is for the atomization for oxygen. The potassium is correctly shown, but has no changes, whereas I've formed one mole of oxygen atoms on the line. That's useful because I know that the potassium must be atomized next because I need to make sure that happens before I try and ionize it. So the contents of the next box must reflect that I've chosen to atomize the potassium. After the top line, which has the potassium ions and the two electrons shown, I now need to start adding my electrons to the oxygen via the first and second electron affinities. This is where it can all go wrong with your attention to detail, as keeping the correct balancing states and not forgetting the electron can be a little bit fiddly. I know my potassium ions won't be changing over these stages, so I'll fill those in first. The electron affinity, that's first electron affinity, creates an oxygen with a minus charge. And the second electron affinity creates an oxygen with a two minus charge. Don't forget that there's still an electron bobbing about in the box after the first electron affinity. Moving on and next up, we have a lattice enthalpy calculation, which is rather frustratingly on a different page from the table of data, so we'll snip it and take it with us. Now, because the formula for the giant ionic lattice we are using, potassium oxide, has a multiple of an ion in its formula, the potassium, it means we're going to need to multiply some of the data unique to that element. In this question's case, because it's the potassium, we're going to need to multiply the ionization energy, by two, and the atomization energy by two, as these are the only changes unique to just the potassium. The typical equation template to learn here is on screen now, and you can see we've got the enthalpy of formation is equal to the atomization for the metal added to the atomization of the non-metal, the ionization energy for the metal added to the electron affinity of the non-metal, the second electron affinities and second ionization energies, if relevant, are added here as well. And we add that to the lattice enthalpy and all of that added together, as I mentioned at the start, is equal to the enthalpy of formation. Rearranging this particular equation, though, is the task here because we're trying to find the lattice enthalpy value, which is our goal right at the very end. It is quite a simple rearrangement, but it is so easy to miss a sign, a value or a multiple as we're having to do here for the potassium. So please don't rush it. Our lattice enthalpy value here, once we've done the calculation, is negative 2,277 kilojoules per mole. Just don't forget to chuck that on the answer line before you move on from the question. Next up, we have some trends to consider. And actually, we start up with a little throwback to module three with a slightly different perspective. When we first meet ionization energies, we don't really think of them as enthalpy changes because we haven't done the enthalpy topic yet, but they are, as we can see from the Born Harbor cycles. Saying that the ionization energy for sodium is more endothermic, as described by the question, is essentially saying that it requires more energy to break the attraction between the nucleus and its outer electron. We need to describe why that's the case for our answer. The reason is because sodium is higher up the group from potassium and therefore has a smaller atomic radius, which causes for more nuclear attraction on its outer electron.
in what I think is a bit of a sneaky move, the next trend is about lattice enthalpies, and it appears at first to be pretty similar, but the focus, if you're very careful this time, is on the ions, not atoms. So please be very careful when discussing radius, as to say sodium ions have an atomic radius, for example, would be incorrect. We should instead say that sodium ions, or even potassium ions, have an ionic radius. Now, explaining why the lattice enthalpy for sodium oxide is more exothermic or more negative, they could have said, is closely related actually to our first answer though. The sodium ion has a smaller ionic radius than the potassium ion, and the smaller ions have more attraction to the other oppositely charged ion in their lattice. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. Please don't forget to leave a like before you go and make sure you subscribe to stay updated. I'm really keen to find out what kind of content you'd like more help with or what you'd like to see more of on the channel. So please leave a comment down below before you head off as well. Until next time, happy revising.